Let me ask you a question. And first, I want you to imagine two different men. The first guy is broke. He's working a low paying job. He has less than 10K in the bank saved up. Even spending $100 on a grocery haul stresses him out. He's struggling to feel confident in himself, struggling to attract women. The second man is wealthy. He can dine out at any restaurant of his choosing without stressing even a little bit about the bill. He can take a last minute trip to anywhere in the world without worrying about the flight fare. Generating over 20K per month and he is able to provide for his girlfriend, his wife, or his entire family without even a little bit of financial worries. The question is, what is the difference between these two men? And I'm not talking about basic tips you've heard on social media like, he's just grinding harder. He doesn't waste his money on Starbucks. He refuses to give up. No, actually think, what is the difference between these two guys? Number one, money is not the focus. So I remember back before I had any momentum with my money, my sole focus was on money. Like, bro, I didn't wanna lose it. Once I made money, I didn't wanna part ways with it. I remember one time Circuit City emailed me a $20 coupon code. And for those of y'all who don't remember, Circuit City was basically like Best Buy, but they went bankrupt and closed a while ago. So I went in, bought a new video game, and saving that $20 felt so good. So what did I do? I went home, I Photoshopped the expiration date on the coupon, and I brought it in week after week to buy different shit. And each time I'd literally have to argue with them because they would scan it and be like, this coupon code's not valid anymore. And then me and my buddy would even come with me and he'd be like, no, we just printed it off. Like you sent it to us to our email. This, it has to be valid. Until eventually the manager told us we just couldn't ever shop there again. That's how bad I wanted to save money. Now, as I made progress in my journey and I started to meet wealthier and wealthier men, I started to realize that their focus was never on the money itself. If they had to drop $500 in a big dinner to cover everyone's meal, it didn't seem to bother them even a a little bit or they'd be telling a story about how their business lost 100k last month and i'd be like oh my god that must be like the end of the world and didn't even bother them and i started to realize that instead of focusing on the money they focused on the activities, the actions, and the projects that would lead them to making more money. They weren't stressed out looking at the numbers in their bank account. No, they were just spending their time focused on the actions that led to the money. Now, of course, I've gotten to a point that I have multiple successful businesses. I purchased my dream villa. And of course, I still keep tabs on my finances and I try and save money where it makes sense. For example, if I'm traveling back to the States, instead of booking a first class flight, if it's super expensive, I'll book economy and I'll try and upgrade the week before to first class because oftentimes you get the ticket for like half the price. But 99% of my focus is not on the money. I'm focused on what can I do to contribute even more and not in a greedy way. For example, with YouTube, I'm always thinking, how can I get my videos to reach even more and more people? And how can I make them even more and more useful so people keep coming back to watch more? That's where my brain lives, not in calculating my investments or trying to invest in different real estate properties. The poor man focuses on money. The rich man focuses on the activities that make money. Number two, don't wait to get fired. So back in our parents' generation, there was this concept called tenor, which I used to always think was 10 year, but it's actually tenor. Basically, people would aim to work at the same company for five years, 10 years, 20 years, because as they developed more seniority, more tenure, they would be rewarded with more benefits, higher pay, more vacation time, but above all else, more job security. Businesses would always let the newer employees go and hold on to the ones who had Tenor. This is also why our parents will always advise us against trying to start our own business and quit our job because back in their generation, that was very risky. It was always a safer path to keep working for the same company and build up that tenor. But the internet changed the world. It reshaped everything. It leveled the playing field. For example, now I can run an advertisement on Facebook or Instagram targeting specifically people who would be likely to purchase edge joggers. Versus in the old days, you'd purchase like a billboard on the side of the street or a TV advertisement and just hope that someone in your target demographic saw it. So obviously back then it made more sense just to work for a Nike or an Adidas versus trying to start your own clothing company. That, that wasn't possible. Now industries evolve a lot faster. Companies utilize the latest tech in AI and this also means that human labor is not worth what it used to be worth. Job turnover is higher and higher. The old school mindset of just get your degree, then get your job, then just coast, that doesn't work anymore. If you do that, you are literally just waiting to get fired and have your ass on the street. Instead, I try and look at myself as my primary asset. The more skills that I can develop, video editing, 
website design, clothing design, problem solving, communication. The more that I level myself up, the more valuable I am to myself and my own businesses or to someone else's business if I was working for someone else. This is the key to becoming wealthy in 2024 and beyond. You have to have this grow or die mindset. I'm either growing and accumulating more skills and experience or I'm slowly dying off and waiting to get my ass fired or for my business to fail. The poor man waits to get fired. The rich man has developed the skills so that he always lands on his feet. Now look, I know that some of you are not in an ideal financial situation at the moment, which is why I wanted to let you know about Dave, the sponsor of today's video. So Dave is basically a banking app, and when you download Dave, you could get up to $500 in five minutes or less with an extra cash account. There are no credit checks and no late fees. You can advance the money you need with no interest and then settle up later. Now look, proper financial planning and living below your means is always the best route to take to avoid getting yourself in sticky situations but sometimes shit does happen. Maybe you're waiting for your next paycheck, but you need to put gas in your car or get some groceries. That's where Dave can help you get out of a pinch. You can download Dave today at dave.com slash beast. That is dave.com slash beast. For terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal. Eligibility criteria and instant transfer fees apply. Banking services provided by Evolve, member FDIC. Number three, I do not deserve shit. So another question for you. If your current boss could hire someone else to complete the exact same tasks that you do, but pay them a little bit less, why shouldn't they do that? Think about it. If you were in their shoes, wouldn't you do that to save money? And because of that, you can never expect someone to give you preferential treatment. Now, the real question is, how do you make yourself even more valuable so someone would be stupid to try and replace you? Or if you're like me and you're trying to start your own business, you have to ask, how can I make it a no brainer that someone should work with me rather than the competition? They would literally be stupid to work with the competition instead of me. This is something I actively do with all of my businesses. Like with the Beastly app, for example, we've developed this to the point that you would literally be stupid to use a different fitness app instead of this one because it just does everything better. It's 2024, I can't be out here trying to sell a workout PDF, that's a joke. That's not gonna stand up to the competition. Now, I know the most of you probably have aspirations to start your own business, but right now you're probably still working at a job out of necessity. So something you can do immediately is you can go into your boss's office tomorrow and ask him, hey, I wanna contribute more. I wanna make your life easier. I want to add more value here. Can we create a plan together so that I can do that? This is such a simple fucking thing that almost nobody does. And if you do it immediately, your boss will start to give you preferential treatment. This is a boss's dream to have someone come in and ask this question. You're gonna be the one who gets the raise. You're gonna be the one who gets the extra time off. And the good news is this is the same basic process you can apply when you are trying to build your first business. You need to always ask yourself, looking at the different parts of the business, how can I contribute more here? How can I make this system a little bit better? The poor man expects people to give him preferential treatment. The rich man earns that treatment. Number four, women and validation. How come you want to become wealthy? Seriously, think about that for a minute. Why do you want to be wealthy, man? What does it mean to you? What's that going to do for your life? For me, I just always thought that it would make my life simpler and there would be less headaches. And spoiler alert, that's not how it works. We're human and we always relatively think that our problems are a disaster and they're bigger than everyone else's problems. It's a it's a limitation of our brain. Also, a lot of times as you make more money, all of a sudden, instead of dealing with you know a $500 bill to fix your car, you're dealing with 200K that your business lost last month because of a mistake. So a lot of times it can actually increase the stress and make life seem more complicated. That's also why I'm at peace with the idea of going broke. Like if some disaster happened and I went broke, God forbid, I'd be all right. I would just have to tackle my problems then the same way I tackle them now. But look, most guys, if they're being honest with themselves, they say that they would like to be wealthy because it's going to allow them to drive a Lambo, which attract the hottest women, live in a mansion. And basically what all this means is that being wealthy would make them feel important and powerful. And that's also a basic human desire to feel powerful, like we're more powerful than the people around us. But you answer the question for yourself, how come you wanna be wealthy? And whatever your reasoning is, that's cool. It's good to be honest with yourself about it and be aware of it. Because thinking about this is going to be your primary fuel to get you going right now, to keep you motivated at the beginning when you're contributing these extra hours and working overtime and grinding your ass off. You need to keep that end goal in mind. But the funny thing is, as I've become friends with more and more guys who are part of this top 1%, let's call it, most of us keep going and find our motivation simply because we fall in love with the process, as cheesy as that sounds. Because once you have money, the thing that keeps life interesting is that challenge 
challenge of like, what else can I create that's so valuable that other people will literally trade me their hard earned cash to have this thing? Like last year, I launched my supplement brand, Gains Club. And at first we released the pre-workout and the protein powder. And while we did have some success in my audience, we struggled to scale it outside of the audience. Yes, this is the best formulated pre-workout on the market, but we didn't give people enough of a reason to change brands. And that's a fucking challenge, right? Like, fuck man, what, what can we do? How do we get past this? And that's when the idea of the Greens Plus Test was born. In this product, your daily greens, but also testosterone support, natural ingredients that optimize your test levels, this gave people that reason. But now we're struggling to keep this in stock, but that's that process. That's that impossible challenge that's so satisfying to solve. And of course, the cars, the houses, the vacations, the women, those payoffs that come with the money, those things are awesome. And most of us wouldn't do all this work if those things weren't there. But like anything in life, you adapt and it starts to feel normal. And that is not gonna be enough to keep you going. So this is just important to keep in mind at the beginning of your journey. Use those as motivation, but ultimately your motivation is gonna have to come from something deeper than that. The poor man wants money to feel important and give validation. The rich man falls in love with the process. Now, if you're serious about leveling up your money, then you need to watch this video next. It is a full guide to unfuck your life. There's no way you're going to get money momentum when you have bad habits and bad energy weighing you down. So click there to watch that now. And if you're new to the channel, click down there to subscribe as I release two new videos every single week and you don't want to miss them. I'll talk to you in the next video. Stay beastly.